Hello students we end the animal kingdom revision in previous video, flowering plant. 1. Flowering plants. Hello students we end the animal kingdom revision in previous video. Now we start the full. Revision of morphology of flowering plant. 1. Flowering plants. The plant body consists of a main axis, which may be branched or unbranched bearing lateral appendages. The main axis is divided into two parts. I. Root system The underground root system develops from the radical embryo and helps in fixation of the plant as well as absorption of water and minerals. 2. Shoot system The aerial shoot system develops from the plumule embryo. It contains root, stem, leaves as vegetative parts and flowers, fruits and seeds as reproductive parts. The vegetative parts are involved in various vegetative functions like structural organization, fixation, absorption, nourishment, growth and maintenance of various components and reproducting parts are for sexual reproduction and germination of new plants. The root. In plants, root is the non-green, due to absence of chlorophyll, cylindrical and descending part that normally grows downwards into the soil. It does not bear leaves, buds and not distinguished into nodes and internodes. Regions of the root. A typical root contains following five regions. However, there is no clear line of distinction between these regions. I. Root cap, calyptra. The root is covered at the apex by a thimble or cap-like structure called the root cap. It protects the root meristem from friction of the soil particles and also protect tender apex which allow the passage of root through cells, example, lemna, icornia. 2. Growing point, meristematic, zone. It is a small, about 1 mm in length, thin-walled region having dense protoplasm. Protoplasm. It lies partly within and partly beyond the root cap. Its cell divide regularly and repeatedly for elongation. It is responsible for the growth of the root. 3. Zone of elongation. It is situated behind the meristematic region, growing point. The cells elongate speedily and increases the length of the root. The cells of this region can absorb water and minerals from the soil. 4. Root hair zone. It is the region where primary tissues differentiate into the root. The vascular tissues like the xylem and phloem are formed. Root hair zone is the most important part of the root for absorption of water, most of the water, from the soil. The root hairs increase the exposed surface of the root for absorption. V. Zone of maturation. This zone contains mature cells. It forms the permanent zone of the root and also gives out lateral roots from the interior part of this region, example, in dicots and gymnosperms. Roots of parasitic plants lack root caps. In aquatic plants, root hairs are usually absent. Types of root system. The root system can be of two types on the basis of place of origin. I. Tap root system. The tap root develops from the radical of embryo of a seed. In most of the plants, primary root persists and becomes stronger to form tap root. The first root forms by the elongation of radical and is called primary root. It continuously grows and produces lateral roots called secondary roots. The further branches of the secondary roots are called tertiary roots and so on. These types of roots are present in dicots, example, pea, gram, groundnut, etc. 2. Adventitious root system. The roots developing from any part of the plant other than the radical are known as adventitious roots, l.adventitious.extraordinary. These are usually found in monocots. The adventitious roots can be further classified as following on the basis of nature of development. A. A. Fibrous roots The primary root soon gets replaced by a cluster of slender, thread-like roots originating from the base of the stem, e.g., triticum vulgar, wheat, ariza sativa, rice, allium sepa, onion. B. Foliar roots These roots develop from the leaf, i.e., from the petiole of the leaf, example, pagostamon, rubber plant. C. True adventitious roots These roots develop from the nodes and internodes of the stem, example, prop roots of banyan, ficus, climbing roots of money plant, pothose, roots from the stem when partially immersed in water, coleus, roots from nodes, oxalis repens, etc. Modification of roots the modifications are the changes in shape, form or structure in an organ to carry out special function other than or in addition to the normal functions. Modification of roots are found in both tap roots and adventitious roots. Modification of tap roots.
The tap roots are modified for the function like storage, nitrogen fixation, and respiration. A. Conical roots These are fleshy tap roots that resemble a cone, broad at the base and gradually tapering towards the apex, example, carrot, docus carrot. B. Fusiform roots The primary root is spindle-shaped. It is swollen in the middle and gradually tapers at both the ends, example, radish, raffinus sativus. C. Napiform roots The primary root is almost spherical, pitcher-shaped, at the base and tapers abruptly at the lower end, example, beetroot, beta vulgaris, comma turnip, brassica rapa, etc. D. Tuberous roots The primary root becomes thick and fleshy, but do not attain any definite shape, irregularly shaped, example, for a clock plant, mirabilis jalloped, echinocystis lobata. E. Nodulated tap roots In this the secondary, tertiary, and sometimes primary roots bear many small irregular swellings called root nodules which contain countless, minute nitrogen-fixing bacteria of the genus Rhizobium, example, groundnut, Aricus bipagia, clover, Medicago falcata, P. Pisum sativum, etc. F. F. Nematophores These are special roots that develop in mangrove plants, grow in marshy areas. The nematophores or aerophores or respiratory roots grow vertically upward and are negatively geotropic. They have minute breathing pores called nematophores or lenticels present on the tips of vertical roots that help in getting oxygen for respiration. Modification of adventitious roots. The adventitious roots are modified to perform several additional functions like food storage, mechanical support, and other vital functions. A. Fasciculated roots These arises in clusters from the base of the stem, example, dahlia, asparagus. B. Nodulous roots These roots have swellings occur only near the tips, example, arrowroot, maranta, amia haldi, curcuma amad. C. Tuberous roots, single root tubers, these are swollen without any definite shape, example, ipamia batatas, sweet potato. D. Prop, pillar, roots The prop roots grow as the horizontal branches of the stem and grow vertically downward. They become thick pillar-like and provide mechanical support to the giant trees, example, banyan tree, ficus bengalensis. E. Stilt roots These are small thick supporting roots growing obliquely from the basal nodes of the main stem. These provide mechanical support, example, saccharum officinarum, sugarcane, z maize, maize. F. Climbing, clinging, roots These roots are found in climbers. They may arise from the nodes, example, ivy, pothose, money plant. G. Assimilatory, photosynthetic, roots These roots have chlorophyll and can synthesize food, example, aerial or hanging roots of some orchids. H. Parasitic, sucking, roots These roots occur in parasitic plant for absorbing nourishment from their host. These roots function as hostoria, example, cuscuta, daughter. Functions of roots. The major functions of roots are as follows. I. Fixation root provides fixation to the plants with soil. 2. Absorption roots absorb water and minerals from the soil and provide it to all parts of the body. Storage roots of many plants store food for the use of other plant parts and for animals. 4. Aeration plants growing in waterlogged soil or marshy areas have special roots, i.e., nematophores for respiration. V. Conduction roots transport water and minerals in upward direction for the uses of stems and leaves. The stem. The stem is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches, leaves, flowers, and fruits. It develops from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. It shows distinction into nodes and internodes, where node is the region from where leaves are born and internodes are the region between two nodes. Its apex bears a terminal bud for growth in length. A bud can be defined as a condensed embryonic shoot that has a growing point surrounded by closely packed immature leaves. When bud grows, the internodes become longer and the leaves spread out, resulting in the formation of a young shoot. Note. The largest bud is cabbage. Bamboo is considered to be tallest herb, tallest shrub, or arborescent grass. Bamboos are called combs after the jointed nature of their stems. Forms of stem. Stem may be aerial, subaerial, or underground. In most of the plants, stems grow above the soil. These are aerial stems. The aerial stems of some plants trail or creep on the ground. They are called subaerial stems. In some plants, the stem grow in the soil and are called underground stems. I. Aerial stems. The aerial stems have two forms, i.e., reduced stem and erect stem. A. Reduced stems it is reduced to a small disc. The asterisk nodes and internodes are not distinguished, example, carrot, radish, turnip, etc.
In some aquatic plants, the reduced discoid stem is green and flattened to float on the surface of water. It does not bear leaves, example, Lemna, Wolfia, Spiridilla. In under underground structures also a reduced, non-green stem is found, example, garlic, onion, and lily. B. Erect stems These stems are strong enough to remain erect or upright without any external support. 2. Subaerial stem. In subaerial stems, some part lives underground, whereas, the remaining part of the stem is aerial. The subaerial stem are also divided into two forms. A. Upright weak stems These stems are weak which climb up a support to expose their foliage and reproductive organs. These are of two types twiners and climbers. A. Twiners These are long, slender and very sensitive and coil around an upright support on coming in contact, E.G. Dalico's Lab Lab, Bean, Clitoria, Butterfly P. Cuscuta. B. Climbers These have weak and flexible stem which climb up a support with the help of certain clasping or clinging structures, example Bougainvillea. C. Prostate weak stems These weak stems take support of the ground for spreading as growth occurs. They are of following four types. Trailers, creepers, they trail along the surface and do not climb up. Runners, these are subaerial weak stems that grow horizontally along the soil surface, example, cynodon, lawn grass, centella, bromibudi, oxalis, etc. Stolons, these subaerial weak stems are horizontal or branched runners with long internodes which can pass over small obstacles. Stolons, also propagate vegetatively like runners, e.g., Fragaria verica, strawberry, jasminum, jasmine, mentha piperita, peppermint. Offsets these weak stems are one internode long, stout, slender and runs horizontally and terminates in a bud at a short distance that develops into adventitious roots, example, pischa, water lettuce, icomia, water hyacinth, etc. 4. Underground stems. The stem of some plants lie below the soil surface. They are non-green, store food as means of perination and vegetative propagation. They are of fo following types. A. Rhizome It is a prostrate thick stem growing horizontally beneath the soil surface. It has distinct nodes and internodes. The nodes bear small-scale leaves with buds in their axils, example, zingiber, ginger officinal, curcuma domestica, turmeric. B. Suckers These are non-green slender stem that grows horizontally in the soil and ultimately comes out to form a new aerial shoot. Each sucker contains one or more nodes with scale leaves and axillary buds, example, mentha, podina, chrysanthemum, goldati. C. Cormit is a swollen condensed form of rhizome which grows in the vertical direction in the soil. It stores a large amount of food, example, amorphophallus, colocasia, taro. D. Tuberit is a swollen end of underground stem branches. Each tuber has many notches on the surface called eyes or buds, which grow into new plants, e.g., Selenum tuberosum, potato. E. Bulbid is a highly reduced disc-like stem. It bears a large number of fibrous adventitious roots at its base. Leaf bases form bulblets. The bulblets grow into new plants, example, Allium sepa, onion, Allium sativum, garlic. Branching pattern of stem. The stems may be branched or unbranched. Branching in stems may be dichotomous and lateral. I. The dichotomous branching occurs by the division of the apical growing point or bud into two equal parts in a forked manner. It occurs in lower plants cryptogams, non-flowering plants, higher plants hyphene, palm, canscora, screw pine, etc. 2. The lateral branching occurs from the axillary buds of the nodes, example, pinus, grapevine, etc. Functions of stem. Stems perform various primary and secondary functions. Primary functions. A. It bears leaves, fruits, flowers and seeds in position. B. It conducts water and minerals to roots, leaves, flowers, fruits, etc. C. It holds flower in suitable position, so that pollination and fertilization takes place. Secondary functions. A. Many stems store food as reserve food materials. B. Some stems also help in photosynthesis and vegetative propagation. C. C. The underground stems help in perination. D. Stem branches provide support to its various parts. Modification of stem. The various forms of aerial stem modification are following. I. Stem tendrils. These are thin, long and sensitive structures which can coil around a support. Tendrils can be of following types on the basis of their origin, d. Axillary arise from axillary buds, example, passiflora, passionflower. 
b. Extra axillary developed near the axillary bud, example, lujfa, cucurbita, pumpkin, etc. c. Apical bud these are modified to form tendrils, example, vitus vinifera. d. Floral bud these are modified to form tendrils, example, antigonin. Stem thorns. The stem thorns are stiff, woody, sharp, and pointed. They develop from axillary bud. They protect the plants from browsing animals, example, citrus, duranta, bougainvillea, pomegranate, etc. Prickles. These are modified stems and act as climbing organs. They protect the plants from grazing animals and also help in climbing in some cases, example, argemone mexicana, prickly poppy, rosa indica, rose, bombax, semble, etc. Filiclade. These are green, flattened structures bearing several nodes and internodes. The true leaves are reduced to spines or scales. They show unlimited growth. Some filiclades also store food and water. The filiclades are examples of some xerophytic plants, example, opuntia, nagafani, casuarina, euphorbia. Cladodes, cladophils. They are green photosynthetic stems generally one internode long. These develop by the modification of only stem branches of limited growth and are green, photosynthetic. The true leaves of the plant are reduced to scales or spines, example, ruscus, asparagus. 2. Bulbals. These are modified vegetative or floral bu buds arising in the axil of scale or foliage leaves. The bulbil helps in vegetative propagation, example, lilium, agave, dioscoria, wild yam, oxalis, etc. The leaf. The leaf is a lateral, generally battened structure born on the stem. It develops at the node and bears a bud in its axil. The axillary bud later develops into a branch. Leaves originate from shoot apical meristems and are arranged in an acropital order. They are the most important vegetative organs for photosynthesis. Parts of a leaf. The leaves also consist of two lateral outgrowths called stipules at their bases. A typical leaf has three main parts. I. Leaf base, hypopodium. The leaf is attached to the stem by the leaf base. Monocots, the leaf base is said to be sheathing as it expands and partially and wholly surrounds the stem. In dicots, the leaf base bears two lateral outgrowths called stipules. In some leguminous plants, the leaf base may become swollen which is called the pulvinus. Leaves with stipules are called stipulate and those without them are termed as extipulate. 2. Petiole, mesopodium. It is the stalk of a leaf. Petiole help hold the leaf blade towards light. Petiole raises the lamina high to the level of stem, so as to provide maximum required exposure to light and air. 3. Lamina, epipodium. The lamina or leaf blade is the green, expanded part of the leaf with veins and veinlets. It has a prominent median vein called the midrib. It produces thinner lateral veins which in turn branch to form veinlets. The lamina is the seat of photosynthesis, gaseous exchange, transpiration, and other metabolic activities. The shape, margin, apex, surface, and extent of envision of lamina varies in different leaves. Venation. The arrangement of veins and veinlets in the lamina of leaf is called venation. The midrib, the midrib veins and veinlets are contained vascular tissues, i.e., the xylem and phloem for conduction water, mineral salts, and food. Leaves have mainly two types of venation i. Reticulate venation. When the veinlets form a network, the venation is called reticulate. It is found in dicot leaves. However, some monocot leaves like smilax, dioscoria and alocasia also show reticulate venation. 2. Parallel venation. When the veins run parallel to e. Importance of fruits. i. Fruits are a source of vitamins, organic acids, minerals, pectin and sugars and some of them are used as vegetables, example, okra, lady's finger, tomato, pumpkin, cucumber, gourd, etc. 2. Cereals are one-seeded dry fruits, form the stable food of humans. 3. Fruits are important foods for fruit-eating birds, frugivorous, and some animals. 4. Some fruits are also used as medicines, example, amblica officinalis, amla, datum stramonium, datura, papaver somniferum, poppy, etc. V. They protect immature seeds against climatic conditions till their maturity. 6. The unripe fruits are bitter due to the presence of tannins, bitter alkaloids, astringents, sour acids, etc. This way they keep the animals away from eating them. The seed. 
Seed is a ripened ovule which contains an embryo or tiny plant with sufficient reserve food for the development of embryo. The ovules after fertilization develops into seeds. A seed is made up of seed coats and an embryo. The embryo is made up of a radical and embryonal axis in one, wheat and maize, or two cotyledons, gram and pea. Types of seeds. Seeds can be classified into two different types based on the number of cotyledons in presence or absence of endosperms, i.e., decotyledonous and monocotyledonous seed. I. De decotyledonous seed. Gram seed is a dicot seed formed in a small pod or legume. The outermost covering is the seed coat. An endosperm is absent. Seed can be studied under two heads, i.e., external structure and internal structure. It is light or dark brown in color. Its surface may be smooth or wrinkled. A small oval scar present at the side called hilum. It is the point where the stalk or funicle of the seed is attached to it. A narrow ridge called raphe runs from hilum to caleza inside the furrow. A small pore called micropile present between the hilum and pointed end. The outermost covering of the seed is seed coat. The outer hard and leathery layer of the coat is called testa, and the inner thin and membranous layer is the tegmen. In some seeds, the tegmen and testa are fused dot each other within a lamina, the venation is termed as parallel, e.g. calophyllum, zingiber officinal, etc. Types of leaves Leaves can be of following types. I. Simple leaves. A leaf having a single or undivided lamina is called simple leaf. The lamina of a simple leaf may be incised, but the incisions do not touch the midrib. The lamina can have various types of incisions which may reach up to half, fid, more than half, partite, or near the base or midrib, sect. Compound leaves. A leaf is called compound when the incision of the leaf blade goes down to the midrib, rachis, or to the petiole, so that the leaf is broken up into a number of segments called leaflets. A bud is present in the axil of petiole in both simple and compound leaves, but not in the axil of leaflets of the compound leaf. A compound leaf can be of following two types. A. Pinnately compound leaves in these leaves, the incision of lamina, is directed towards the midrib, which is known as rachis. Leaflets are arranged on both sides on the rachis, example, neem, rose, etc. B. Palmate compound leaves the leaflets are attached at a common point, i.e., at the tip of petiole is in silk cotton. Philotax Philotaxy The pattern of arrangement of leaves on the stem or branch is called philotaxy. It helps to avoid overcrowding and provide every leaf with optimum sunshine. Philotaxy is usually of three types. I. Alternate, spiral, philotaxy. A single leaf arises at each node in alternate manner, e.g., china rose, mustard and sunflower plants. 2. Opposite philotaxy. A pair of leaves axes at each node and opposite to each other, example, calotropus, and cidium guajava, guava plants. Whorled, verticillate, philotaxy. If more than two leaves arise at a node and form a whorl, it is called whorled. The leaves of one whorl generally alternate with those of the adjacent whorls in order to provide maximum exposure, example, nerium, caner, alstonia. Modification of leaves. Leaves of plants are modified to perform different additional functions in addition to their main function, i.e., photosynthesis. I. Leaf tendrils. These are thread-like sensitive structures which can coil around a support to help the plant in climbing, e.g., wild pea, Lathyra sifaca, Pisum sativum, sweet pea, and Gloriosa superba, glory lily. 2. Phyllode. It is a green, short-lived and flattened petiole or rachis of a leaf, which performs the function of photosynthesis, e.g., Australian acacia. Phyllodes develop usually vertically and possess fewer stomata hence, reduce transpiration. 3. Bladder. The segments of the leaf modify into bladder-like structures, which trap small insects present in the water. Example, bladderwort, utricularia. 4. Pitcher. It is a petiole modified into a tendril to hold the pitcher upright. The leaf base is expanded to carry out photosynthesis. The leaf apex is modified into a lid, e.g., nepenthes, dyskidia, and saracenia. V. Leaf spines. The entire leaf or a part of a leaf may be modified into a pointed structure called a spine, as in opuntia. 6. Scale leaves. These are thin, membranous leaves found at the nodal region. Each scale leaf contains an axillary bud in its axil, e.g., Zingiber officinal, ginger. Functions of leaves. Leaves. 
The leaves have many primary and secondary functions. Primary functions. A. The most important function of leaves is photosynthesis with the help of sunlight and carbon dioxide. B. Leaves contain stomata through which gaseous exchange occurs. C. Leaves are the site of transpiration. D. They protect axillary and terminal bud from mechanical injury and desiccation. Secondary functions. A. Leaves store food as in the leaf base, example, onion. B. Leaves change into phyllodes to protect against transpiration. C. Storage of water in the cells of some succulent plants, example, aloe. D. In salvinia, one leaf of each node is changed into roots that act as balancer for floating. E. In some leaves like of euphorbia, the young leaves are brightly colored to attract insects for pollination. The inflorescence. The arrangement and distribution of flowers over a plant is called inflorescence. The inflorescence can be of following three types. 1. Racemose inflorescence. In racemose type of inflorescence, the main axis continues to grow and the flowers are born laterally in an acropital succession, the older flowers are found towards the base and younger ones at the apex, or centripetal, older towards periphery and younger towards center. 2. Cymose inflorescence. In cymose inflorescence, the tip of the main axis terminates in a flower and further growth continues by one or more lateral branches, which also behave like the main axis. The arrangement of flowers in either basipital, younger flowers occupy basal position, while older flowers towards the apex, or centrifugal, older towards center and younger towards periphery. 3. Special inflorescence. It mainly involves highly modified and densely crowded inflorescences. The special type of inflorescence can be divided into following types. I. Cyathium. It is highly reduced and is a cup-shaped involucre of five bracts having nectariferous glands. A single large female flower, flower is present in the center of the cup and scorpioid male flowers surrounded this female flower. Every male flower is represented by a single stalked stamen born in the axil of a scaly bract, E.G. Euphorbia. 2. Verticillaster. These are two clusters each having three to nine flowers that develop on a node in the axils of opposite leaves, example, Ossimum sanctum, basil. 3. Hypanthodium. In this type, the main axis is condensed into a cup or flask-shaped, fleshy receptacle. It bears three kinds of flowers, i.e., male flowers, towards the pore, female flowers, towards the base, and neutral flowers occurs in between male and female flowers, example, pepal, ficus religiosa, and banyan, ficus bengalensis. The flower. The flower is the reproductive unit in the angiosperms. It is meant for sexual reproduction. Morphologically, it is considered as a shoot bearing nodes in modified floral leaves. A flower's is called modified shoot because the position of the buds of both flower and shoot which is same and can be in terminal or axillary in position. Structure of flower. A flower arises in the axil of a leaf like structure called bract. Flowers with bracts are called bracteate and those without bracts are called ebracteate. The terminal part of the axis of the flower is the receptacle or thalamus. The receptacle contains sepals, petals, stamens, and carpels. If the leaves are present on the pedicle, they are called bracteoles. Parts of a flower. A typical flower consists of four distinct parts the calyx, the corolla, the andricium, and the gynoecium. The calyx and corolla are accessory parts, and the andricium and gynoecium are essential parts. These essential parts consist of two kinds of male sporophylls, the microsporophyll, male, and the megasporophyll, female. A flower can be unisexual or bisexual. It is born on short or long axis. The axis contains two regions the pedicel and the thalamus or receptacle. The pedicel may, may be short, long or even absent. The thalamus is the swollen end of the axis on which the floral whorls are arranged. Different parts of flower are given below. I. Calyx. It is the outermost whorl of a flower. It is made up of units like sepals. The sepals are generally green, leaf-like and protect the flower in the bud stage, i.e., when floral in bud condition. They have veins and stomata like ordinary leaves but are thicker in nature. The sepals may be gamosepalous, sepals united, example, says alpinia or polysepalous, sepals free, example, crotillaria. The sepals also prevent transpiration from inner parts of the flower. Colored sepals attract insects for pollination. 2. Corolla. It is composed of petals. 
Petals are usually brightly colored to attract insects for pollination. Like calyx, corolla may also be gamma petalons, petals united, or polypetalous, petals free. The shape and color of corolla may vary greatly in shape. Corolla may be tubular, bell-shaped, funnel-shaped. Estivation. The mode of arrangement of sepals or petals in floral bud with respect to the other members of the same whorl is known as estivation. The estivation pattern is important in classification of plants. It is of following types. A. Valvate petals come to each other, but do not overlap, example, mustard, brassica. B. Twisted regular overlapping of petals occurs in which margin of one petal overlap with the next one petal, example, china rose, hibiscus rosa sinensis. C. Imbricate there are five petals, arranged in such a way that one petal is completely external and another petal is completely internal, while three petals are partially external and partially internal, example, cassia, colostemon, says alpinia. D. Vexillary when the largest petal overlaps the two lateral petals which in turn over overlap the two smallest anterior petals, keel, the estivation is called as vexillary or papillionaceous. 2. Andricium. It is the third whorl of flower composed of stamens or microsporangium. Each stamen, which represents the male reproductive organ consists of a stalk or a filament and an anther. Each anther is usually bilobed which are attached at the back by a sterile band called connective and each lobe has two chambers, the pollen sacs. The pollen grains are produced in pollen sacs. A sterile stamen is called staminode. Stamens can be of different types depending on their union with other members such as petals or among themselves. A. When stamens are attached to the petals, they are epipetalous, example, brinjal. B. When stamens are attached to the perianth, the condition is called epiphyllous, example, lily. C. The stamens in a flower may either remain free, i.e., polyandrous, or may be united in varying degrees. D. The stamens may be united into one bunch or one bundle, i.e., monoadelphus, as in China rose. It may be two bundles, i.e., diadelphus as in P.E. or into more than two bundles, i.e., polyadelphus as in citrus. E. There may be variation in the length of filament as in salvia and mustard. 4. Gynoecium. Gynoecium is the female reproductive part of the flower and is made up of one or more carpels or megasporangium. Megaspores are produced within the megasporangium. A carpel consists of three parts, i.e., stigma, style, and ovary. The stigma is usually at the tip of style and is the receptive surface for pollen grains. Ovary is the enlarged basal part on which lies the elongated tube, the style. The style connects the ovary to the stigma. Each ovary bears one or more ovules attached to a flattened, cushion-like placenta. Depending on the number of carpal present may be free or united, gynoecium can be of following types. A. Ap Apocarpus when more than one carpal is present, they may be free are called apocarpus, example, lotus and rose. B. Syncarpus when carpals are fused together, the gynoecium is called syncarpus, example, brinjal and hibiscus. The cavity enclosed by the ovary wall is called locule. The number of locules in the ovary correspond to the number of carpals in the gynoecium, i.e., unilocular, only one locule, example, p, bilocular, two locules, example, tomato, trilocular, three locules, example, ricinus, multilocular, many locules, example, orange and lemon. The arrangement of ovules within the ovary is known as placentation. The placenta is a tissue which develops along the inner wall of the ovary. The ovule or ovules remain attached to the placenta. The placentation can be of different types. Marginal the placenta forms a ridge along the ventral suture of the ovary, and the ovules are born on this ridge forming two rows is called marginal placentation, example p. b. Axile when the placenta is axial, and the ovules are attached to it in a multilocular ovary, the placentation is called axile, example, china rose, tomato and lemon. c. Parietal when the ovules develop on the inner wall of the ovary or on peripheral part, it is called parietal placentation. Ovary is one-chambered, but it becomes two-chambered due to formation of the false septum, example, mustard and argemone. D. Free central when the ovules are born on central axis and septa are absent, the placentation is called free central, example, dianthus and primrose. E. Basal in this type, the placenta develops at the base of ovary, and a single ovule is attached to it as in sunflower, marigold. The placenta develops directly on the thalamus. Insertion of floral parts, forms of thalamus. The positions of different whorls of flowers are different. This is due to the position of ovary. 
These positions may be of three types. I. Hypogenous flower. The thalamus is conical, dome-shaped or flat. The ovary is present at the top of thalamus. The stamen, petals and sepals are separate and successively inserted below the ovary. Ovary is superior, whereas rest of the structures are inferior, example, brassica, hibiscus, petunia. 2. Periginous flower. The margin of thalamus grows upwards forming a cup-like structure called calyx tube. The calyx tube encloses ovary, but remains free from it, and the sepals, petals and stamens are present in it. The ovary is half inferior, example, rose, plum, peach, etc. 3. Epigenous flower. The thalamus grows upwards to completely develop the ovary, and also fused inseparably with the latter. The other floral parts are born at the top of the fused thalamus and ovary. The ovary is called inferior, example, helianthus, sunflower, cucurbita, pumpkin, pyrus, apple. Number of floral parts. When the floral appendages are in the multiple of three, four or five, the flower is considered as trimerous, tetramerous, or pentamerous respectively. Decotyledonous flowers are usually D, tetra, or pentamerous, while monocotyledonous flowers are trimerous. Symmetry of a flower. The symmetry of a flower depends upon the shape, size, and arrangement of floral parts, example, calyx, corolla, andricium, and gynoecium. Flowers can be actomorphic and zygomorphic on the basis of symmetry. Actinomorphic. In this type, a flower can be divided into exactly equal halves by any vertical section passing through the center of a flower, example, mustard, datura. Zygomorphic. In this type, flower can be divided into two identical halves through only one particular vertical plane, example, osimum, cassia. The fruit. The characteristic feature of flowering plants is fruit. Fruit is a mature or ripen ovary, developed after fertilization. During fertilization, the important changes taking place in the ovary are 2. The ovules present in it develops into seeds. 2. The wall of the ovary thickens and ripens into pericarp, fruit wall. Note. Fruits developed from the fertilized ovary is called true fruits. A true fruit has two parts pericarp and the seeds. Fruits developed from any part of the flower along with ovary is called false fruits. The thalamus grows along with the ovary to form a false fruit i.e. in pyrus malus apple. The fruit of mango and coconut are also known as droop, as it developed from monocarpillary superior ovaries and have only one seed. The ovary after these changes is known as the fruit. If a fruit is formed without fertilization, it is called parthenocarpic fruit, example, banana, grapes, pineapple, etc. The parthenocarpic fruits do not have seeds. The fruit consists of wall or pericarp and seeds. The pericarp may be dry or fleshy. When pericarp is thick and fleshy, it is differentiated into outer epicarp, the middle mesocarp, and the inner endocarp. Types of fruits. Fruits can be broadly classified into following three types. I. Simple fruits. A simple fruit develops from the single simple or compound ovary of a flower. These can be dry fruits, pericarp dry or succulent fruits, pericarp fleshy. 2. Aggregate, eterio, fruits. An aggregate fruit is a group of fruitlets which develops from a flower having polycarpillary apocarpus, free, gynoecium. The aggregate fruit is also called eterio. 3. Multiple, composite, fruits. A composite, multiple, fruit develops from an entire inflorescence. The multiple fruit is composed of a number of closely associated fruits, which may or may not get fused, along with its peduncle. Hence, these fruits are pseudocarps, and are also called inflorescence fruits. Pomology is the branch of horticulture that deals with the study of fruits, and their cultivation. Edible parts of some common fruits. Importance of fruits. I. Fruits are a source of vitamins, organic acids, minerals, pectin and sugars and some of them are used as vegetables, example, okra, lady's finger, tomato, pumpkin, cucumber, gourd, etc. 2. Cereals are one-seeded dry fruits, form the stable, stable food of humans. 3. Fruits are important foods for fruit-eating birds, frugivorous, and some animals. 4. Some fruits are also used as medicines, example, amblica officinalis, amla, datum stramonium, datura, papaver somniferum, poppy, etc. V. They protect immature seeds against climatic conditions till their maturity. 6. The unripe fruits are bitter due to the presence of tannins, bitter alkaloids, astringents, sour acids, etc. This way they keep the animals away from eating them.
The seed. Seed is a ripened ovule which contains an embryo or tiny plant with sufficient reserve food for the development of embryo. The ovules after fertilization develops into seeds. A seed is made up of seed coats and an embryo. The embryo is made up of a radical and embryonal axis in one, wheat and maize, or two cotyledons, gram and pea. Types of seeds. Seeds can be classified into two different types based on the number of cotyledons in presence or absence of endosperms, i.e., decotyledonous and monocotyledonous seed. I. Decotyledonous seed. Gram seed is a dicot seed formed in a small pod or legume. The outermost covering is the seed coat. An endosperm is absent. Seed can be studied under two heads, i.e., external structure and internal structure. It is light or dark brown in color. Its surface may be smooth or wrinkled. A small oval scar present at the side called hilum. It is the point where the stalk or funicle of the seed is attached to it. A narrow ridge called raphe runs from hilum to caleza inside the furrow. A small pore called micropile present between the hilum and pointed end. The outermost covering of the seed is seed coat. The outer hard and leathery layer of the coat is called testa, and the inner thin and membranous layer is the tegmen. In some seeds, the tegmen and testa are fused. The seed coat encloses the embryo, which is differentiated into a radical, a plumule, and cotyledons. The radical develops into root and plumule into shoot. Cotyledons may be one or two to serve as res reserve food. Hypocotyl is a part present between the point of attachment of cotyledon and radical. Epicotyl is present between point of attachment of cotyledons and plumule. In some seeds, such as castor seeds, the endosperm is formed as a result of double fertilization, which is a food storing tissue. In plants like bean, gram and pea, the endosperm is not present in mature seeds, i.e., non-endospermous seeds. 2. Monocotyledonous seed. The monocotyledonous seeds are endospermic, but some as in orchids are non-endospermic. In the cereals, such as maize, the seed coat is membranous and generally fused with the fruit wall. Structure of monocotyledonous seed. The endosperm is bulky and stores food. The outer covering of endosperm separates the embryo by a proteinous layer called alurone layer. The embryo is small and situated in a groove at one end of the endosperm. It consists of one large shield-shaped cotyledon known as scutellum, and a short axis with a plumule and a radical. The plumule and radical are enclosed in sheaths which are called coleoptil and coleoriza respectively. Coleoptil has a terminal pore for the emergence of first leaf during germination. The sheath is capable of growth. It helps the future shoot in passing through the soil during germination, example, maize grain is whitish, yellow, violet, or red in color. It is smooth or shiny surface. Its grain is covered with a single, thin hard covering. It is formed by the fusion of seed coat or testa and the fruit wall gr pericarp. Floral formula. The symbolic representation of floral characters of a flower is called floral formula. For example, the floral formula of brassica, mustard, represented as given by. Description of this formula is e bracteate, actinomorphic, bisexual, bimerous, calyx 4, polycephalous, in two whorls of two each corolla 4, polypetalous, cruciform, andricium 6, polyandrous, tetradynamous in two whorls, one with two, gynoecium bicarpillary syncarpus, superior. Description Description of some important families. I. Family Fabaceae. This family was earlier called Papillionoidae, a subfamily of family Leguminosae. It is distributed all over the world. 1. System position. 2. Distribution The family includes 600 genera and 13,000 species. It is distributed all over the world except the Arctic regions. 3. Habit The plants are musty herbs, however shrubs, trees and climbers are also common. For vegetative characters. I. Root tap root with lateral branches. The lateral branches mostly contain bacterial nodules, with rhizobium bacteria which fix atmospheric nitrogen. 2. Stem herbaceous or woody, branched, erect or climbing. 3. Leaf alternate, pinnately compound or simple, leaf base, pulvinate, stipulate, venation reticulate. 5. Floral characters. I. Inflorescent simple raceme, axillary cyme or solitary. 2. Flower bracteate, pedicellate, subsessal, bisexual, mostly, irregular, zygomorphic, sometimes regular, pentamerous, hypogenous, or slightly periginous.
A. Calyx sepals 5, gamosepalus, imbricate estivation. B. Corolla petal 5, polypetalus, papillion acheus, consisting of a posterior standard, two later wings, two anterior ones forming a well, enclosing stamens and pistil, vexillary estivation. C. Andrisium stamens 10, usually diadelphus, 9, plus 1, or monadelphus, sometimes free, polyandrous, another dithecus, basifixed, attached by its base. D. Gynoecium monocarpillary, ovary superior, unilocular with marginal placentation, style bent, stigma simple, and hairy. E. Fruit legume pod. F. Seed 1 to many non endospermic. 3. Floral formula. Economic importance with examples. Plants belonging to this family HQS their importance in the following fields. I. Pulses and vegetables The family is an important source of pulses and vegetables. The carrot pulses are rich in proteins like gram, chana, pea, muttar, field bean, bankla, cluster bean, guar, lima bean, bean, lobia, lentil, masoer, bean, sem, soya, soybean, etc. 2. Oil edible oils are obtained from the seeds of Aricus hypogea, groundnut, and glycinmax, soybean. Vegetable ghee is prepared by using the oils after hydrogenation. 3. Timber Dalbergia sisu, Indian redwood, Dalbergia latifolia, Indian rosewood, are important timber yielding trees of the family. 4. Di indigofer tinctoria, indigo, Butea monosperma, flame of the forest, is used to produce red dye used as an astringent. V. Fodder plants like Trifolium alexandrium, Barsim, Medicago sativa, Siamopsis tetragonoloba, etc., yield fodder for the cattle. 6. Fibers Crotillaria junsea, sunhemp, is used to produce fibers. 7. Ornamental Some common ornamental plants are Lathyrus odoratus, sweet pea, Clitoria, butterfly pea, lupinus, etc., are common ornamental plants. 8. Jewel RS weights The seeds of Abris precatorius, ratty, are used weight by jewel R's. 9. Medicinal plants The flowers of Trifolium pretense are used in whooping cough. The gum of Butea monosperma, doc, is useful for treating dysentery and diarrhea. There are several other examples in this family that are used as medicines. 2. Family Solanaceae. It is a large family, commonly called as the potato family. It is widely distributed in tropics, subtropics, and even temperate zones. 1. Systematic position. 2. Distribution. The family is represented by 90 genera and 2,800 species distributed in both tropical and temperate regions. 3. Habit. Annual or perennial herbs, shrubs, or rarely soft wooded trees. 4. Vegetative characters. I. Root usually tap roots. 2. Stem herbaceous or woody, hair or prickles often present, sometimes underground tubers, selenum tuberosum. 3. Leaf and vegetative parts alternate and floral regions opposite, extipulate, simple, rarely pinnately compound as in potato and tomato. 5. Floral characters. I. Inflore inflorescence solitary, axillary or cymose as in solarium. 2. Flower bisexual, actinomorphic, ebracteate, pedicellate, pentamerous, and hypogenous. Calyx sepals 5, united, valvate estivation, usually persistent as in brinjal, tomato, chili, etc. B. Corolla petals 5, united, valvate estivation, rotate or tubular, rarely funnel shaped. C. Andrisium stamens 5, epipetalus, alternating with petals, inserted in corolla tube, filaments usually of unequal length, anthers bithicus. D. Gynoecium bicarpillary, syncarpus, ovary superior, bilocular, placenta swollen with many ovules. E. Fruits berry or capsule. F. Seeds endospermic, embryo straight. 3. Ebro G2 B D fig, 5.25 so slash anum nigrum, makoi, plant, A. Flowering twig, B. Flower, C. LS of flower, D. Stamens, E. Carpal, F. Floral diagram. Economic, importance with examples. Plants belonging to the family Solanaceae has their importance in the following fields. I. Food The family Solanaceae includes a number of vegetables and spice-yielding plants. For example, Selenum tuberosum, potato, Selenum melangina, brinjal, Lycopersican esculentum, tomato, Physalus peruviana, ground cherry, Capsicum annuum, chilies, etc. The second, Tobacco nicotiana tobacum, and N. rustica. Contain toxic alkaloid nicotine. It is used for chewing, smoking and snuff. 3. Medicines Atropa belladona is used to obtain belladona and atropine. 
Belladonna is used for relieving pain and treating cough. Atropine is used for dilating eye pupil. Deterostromonium is used in asthma. Other medicinal plants are Selenum xanthocarpum, Withania somnifera, Hyacimus niger, etc. Ornamentals The common ornamental plants are Cestrum nocturnum, Ratkirani, Petunia hybrida, Physalis peruviana, Cape gooseberry, etc. 3. Family Liliaceae. 1. Systematic position. 2. Distribution. The family Liliaceae, Lily family, includes about 250 genera and 3,700 species showing worldwide distribution. About 200 species are available in India. 3. Habit. Usually perennial herbs, perinating by underground rhizomes, corms or bulbs, rarely shrubs or climbers, example, smilax, gloriosa, etc. 4. Vegetative characters. I. Root generally adventitious, fibrous or fleshy, example, asparagus. 2. Stem herbaceous or woody. In some species underground bulbs or rhizomes. 3. Leaves mostly basal, alternate, linear, extipulate with parallel venation. 5. Floral characters. I. Inflorescence mostly racemos, sometimes cymos, rarely solitary. 2. Flower bracteate, pedicellate, actinomorphic, incomplete, bisexual, trimerous, and hypogenous. A. Perianth tepal 6, 3 plus 3, often united into tube, valvate estivation. B. Polyandrous opposite to tepals, sometimes epiphyllous. C. Gynoecium tricarpillary, syncarpus, trilocular with many ovules, axile placentation, rarely unilocular with parietal placentation, ovary superior, style simple with three lobed stigma. D. Fruit a loculated capsule, rarely a berry. E. Seed endospermic, embryo curved or straight. F. Floral formula by. 3. Floral formula bro dollar po plus o c b d a fig, 5.26 a forward slash forward slash em sepa, onion, plant a, plant b, inflorescence, c, flower d, floral diaram. Economic importance with examples. Plants belonging to this family has their importance in the following fields. I. Food Allium sepa, onion, Allium sativum, garlic, young shoots and fleshy roots of asparagus, shadavar, are used as vegetables. 2. Medicines Aloe leaves are used to cure piles, liver problems. Roots of Smilax are used as blood purifier. Raw onion is useful in constipation, diarrhea and cholera. Dried corms of Colchicum autumnale, meadow saffron, are used against rheumatism and gout. 3. Ornamentals The common ornamentals are ruscus, yucca, aloe, asparagus, gloriosa, smilax, tulips, lilies, etc. 4. Fibers The fiber-yielding plants of Iechi family are yucca filamentosa, Sansevieria roxburgiana, etc. So here we end the revision of morphology of flowering plant, make sure you like and subscribe.